All right, it is the Shepherdess at Harmony Farms coming at you today with a $100,000 farm business plan. Now to help you in this process, I have created a free PDF worksheet that you can use as you watch this video. This will help you to create your very own $100,000 farm business plan. So click on that link down below and I will email it straight to you. Now, if you watched Becoming a Farmer in 180 Days, which was one of my previous videos, you will know that farming is new for me but business is not. Actually, for the past 10 years, I have been actively engaged in business management, marketing, profit analysis, all that stuff, and that still remains my full-time job. So, jumping into farming, I started out with a really clear-cut plan to profit, and actually came to that clear-cut plan to profit over time, but I came to it asking a series of seven questions. Boils down to seven questions to creating your business plan and you need to answer these questions for yourself before becoming a farmer and that is in my opinion anyways now invariably depending on who's watching this or you're like oh my goodness a hundred thousand dollars you're gonna be so rich from your farm and i want to clarify really quickly um, if you have been an entrepreneur before you know what i'm talking about but there's a difference between gross sales and net profit and I set my gross sales goal at $100,000 because I realized from running my own businesses for the past 10, 15 years that you only take home a portion of that. And in farming, I have the optimistic expectation of taking home 30% of annual sales as profit. And so I think that if we're going to be making a small farm for profit, we need to start out with an understanding that it's going to take those kind of numbers to generate any real profit from your small farm. So with that established, I'm going to get straight into seven steps to formulating your $100,000 farm business plan. Question number one. Why? Do you want to be a farmer? I am not going to be the first person to ask you the question. I'm not going to be the last person to ask you the question if you are considering farming for profit. And if you are, especially if you are first generation, like I really hope to ignite people to become first generation farmers. Why do you want to be a farmer? And the answer cannot be because I want to make money from it. Because guys, I am gonna be super honest with you in a way that maybe other people won't be honest with you. There are a million other ways to make this kind of money. And 999,000 of them will be easier than farming. So your why has got to be greater than I want to make money. For me personally, my why is that I honestly believe the Lord has put me in the midst of these resources for a purpose and I, became awakened to this concept of regenerative agriculture less than a year ago. And I looked at my resources and I said, I've got to do something. Another thing is that the average American farmer is pushing 65 years old, according to a USDA census. When any labor force exceeds 35 years of age, that particular industry is said to be going into extinction, which is a major concern for our country and our world, given the fact that the food we eat every day is directly connected to a farmer. So that's my why. I want to be a good steward of the resources that the Lord has placed me right in the middle of, and I have a real concern for regenerative farming and a real desire to be part of it. So you establish your why and make sure it is gonna be strong enough to get you through those difficult days. Question number two is who? Who, who is going to buy my farm products? In the business world, this is called market research and it is crucial to do this right up 
front. You want to make sure that there is actually going to be an audience for your hypothetical farm products. Otherwise, you're building a field of dreams and people don't always come. So identify your who up front. And chances are, if you have a supportive community, if you have a really good friends group, if you have a local farmer's market, you should not have any trouble finding a who will buy a really good quality farm product. But make sure to make that list right up front and make, I would say, try to find at least 10 different who's to put on that list, whether it's Aunt Sandy or your local community, whether your neighbors are supportive, whatever it is, find your who first and make sure that they exist and then proceed with your farm business plan. My who's include a very supportive family group and a local community, as well as a metro area just one hour away that has about 7.2 million residents um, and over 20 different farm to table restaurants. Those are my who's and my list goes on, but make sure that you get the who before you proceed. Next question to answer is what? And there are actually a two different what's that you have to answer to formulate your $100,000 small farm business plan. The first what is, what do I have to start with? I mentioned in a previous video that the fastest track to profitability is converting an existing resource into a desirable finished product. If you've got a scout for resources to build your farm, it's gonna be more expensive at the upstart. It's not gonna be impossible, but it's gonna cost you a lot more money to go out and buy 10 acres than if you were to start with something. And you honestly don't have to have much. This does not have to have much. I've heard stories, legitimate stories, of people making $100,000 per acre selling specialty products like organic vegetables, microgreens, so forth. Doesn't have to be major, but you want to list out all your existing resources here your land, your rainfall, assuming that you are on a pasture-based system, even things like your human resource, because there are gonna be days where you cannot do it all and you're gonna need somebody's help and you're probably gonna need them to help you for free. So it's not a bad idea to take an inventory of your human resource, land resource, all that stuff, anything that could possibly contribute to your farm business, list it. Here. So my list looks something like 30 acres. This property actually doesn't even belong to me. This is 30 acres of family property. So there's another idea for you. If you've got an aunt or an uncle who has underutilized or unutilized property and you've got a good relationship with them, exchange some things for the use of their property. Say, hey, I'll mow your lawn and paint your house and clean your gutters for the usage of three acres to start my farm business. Just be creative like that and think in those ways. Um, but my resource is 30 acres of family prop property doesn't even belong to me, but I am given free permission to use it. I live in a place that has above average rainfall and above average sunlight. So my grass is really pretty good. and fits a really good pasture-based system. So those are the things, the list goes on. I have good, some good fencing as well, so you can put that in there as an expense that you don't have to start out with. But whatever it is, find out what you got going on right now, whether it's one acre, two acres, half acre, list it. This is gonna be a really big part of all the rest of the questions on this $100,000 farm business plan. So I'm gonna leave my resources right here for the second what that is coming up. And now that you've evaluated your resources, now that you've seen what you've got to go on, you need to find a what. What are you going to farm? And you need to make sure it matches these resources really, really well, or else again, it's gonna be very expensive to get started in farming. So in order to, again, fast track yourself to profitability, you really need to make sure your resources match your desired end product. An analogy for this. So say I wanted to farm gourmet grass-fed beef, yet I only have like three acres of ragweed. That, that's not a good match 
okay? Because it's not a good match. So I would need to adjust my ideals to something like a goat. Goats would thrive on ragweed. Change in plans, but a faster track to profitability. And that's one I, thing I really want to say is that don't cling to your ideals at the expense of profitability. In any business, in any farm, be flexible when you are writing out your business plan. So all of these things considered, my goal of grass-fed, pasture-raised meats is legitimate. I've got some good acreage. It's small relatively, but it's big enough to do what I want to do. I've got rain, I've got sun, I've got good grass, and my fit, my desired farming product, which is beef and lamb, as well as a few other things to diversify, really fits, really fits my resources. So again, keep this resource list, constantly refer back to it, because matching what you want to farm to your existing resources I'm gonna say it again, it's gonna be your fastest track to profitability. All right, we are breezing through. We are at question number five, and that's really good because I gotta go feed my animals soon. But the question number five is how much? How much of my given decided upon farm products will I need to sell? in order to reach $100,000 in annual sales. Now, uh, another thing I'm just gonna input here is that diversity also hastens your arrival at profitability. Um, this is something that is a general principle in business and, and a lot of the retail businesses that I have been involved in. But for sake of simplicity, in this illustration, I'm just gonna use one product, which is gonna be pasture raised lamb, and I'm gonna divide that out to figure out what I need to sell to reach $100,000 in annual sales. So I've done my research, I've gone to my local farmer's markets, I've seen what people close by are selling their pasture raised grass fed lamb for. It's about $11 per pound. That's a conservative estimate. So $11 per pound, I am gonna to have to sell 9,091 pounds of pasture raised lamb every year to reach annual sales of $100,000. Now that divvies out to about 230 lambs, 230 lambs. I will need to produce 230 marketable lambs from my farm every year in order to reach that sales goal of $100,000 in annual sales. So this is actually the extremely exciting part to me to actually have this number. And once you have this number for any given farm product that you decide to produce, you need to double back to your resource, to your resource list. And you need to make sure that you're not going to be exhausting your resource to produce this. Whatever you do, do not do that. That's what conventional farming has done for decades. And as regenerative farmers, it is our responsibility to back out of those practices. So make sure that you have the resources to facilitate these numbers without being irresponsible. But also think, okay, maybe my current resource list can't facilitate this number quite yet. That's where we come to our next question of timeline. I'm gonna get into that just a little bit, but also consider other things like, okay, I can rent extra acreage. Whatever it is, just get creative and think about what you can do to expand your resource list to reach this number. And that brings us to number six, which is really hand in hand with how much. And that's a timeline. You need to be thinking long-term with respect to your farming strategy. My goal is to reach $100,000 in annual sales on my farm at the end of seven years. This long-term approach is totally antithetical to what our culture is about and what our world has been about for generations. But we need to start thinking 
this way. It has been said that the average person overestimates what he can do in one year, but even more so underestimates what he can do in five years. And that just kind of about sums up our unwillingness to invest in the long term. But I want to encourage you to do that, especially on your farm. So my goal is to hit this 100,000 in annual sales at the end of seven years, which gives me the ability to grow my resources, to grow my land base if need be, all over the course of seven years. So what will your timeline be? I just misspelled that. I can spell a little bit. So what will your timeline be? How much time are you going to give yourself to reach these really serious goals and do this really important thing that is small scale regenerative farming for profit? When will you reach that significant sales volume? And this is only a question you can answer for yourself. You need to sit down with your resource list, with what you decided to farm and with the quantity it's going to take to reach that $100,000 goal and then you'll come to this number. For me personally, it is seven years based on the reality that I only have like 25 sheep and three steers. Your number one is gonna be really small. Your number two is gonna be bigger, Lord willing. Three, four, five, six, seven, and so on until I reach that goal. But for you, do not be afraid to start small because starting small is better than not starting at all. There are a hundred different steps to the final destination in this particular journey and you need to give yourself the time. So for me, my timeline is seven years. In the meantime, I am not quitting my day job. I, like I said, I have a job in marketing and retail management that I can manage from a home base, which is ideal for my farm startup. I also have the opportunity with this seven years to make sure that I am not exhausting my land base by the incremental increase of stocking density. And it is going to allow me to grow my farm with less financial pressure than if I was to go invest immediately in this large flock and these 20 cows. I can do it year by year, little by little. So that's my number, seven years. Your number might be different might be longer, might be shorter, whatever it is, give yourself that time and pace yourself for the marathon. All right, final question, but probably one of the most important. Well, not one of the most important, but it's pretty important. Where, where are you gonna get the money to start building your farm? This is a question only you can ask. And this is also a dual question that at the blog, I've kind of built this out just a little bit more, which is www.harmonyfarms.blog. But I've built this particular element out just a little bit more in detail there. But this, where are you gonna get the money question actually comes after you counted the cost from all the previous steps. What is it going to take you to transfer your resource, your land base, into something that can carry the animals that will produce the product, the animals or the produce. For me, my cost list looked like a lot of electric fencing, actually buying in some livestock. And it may be different for you, maybe more, and it may be less. But whatever it is, you need to have a list of costs that are gonna be associated with priming your land base and your resources for your farm. And then you will bring yourself to the question of, where am I going to get that money? For me personally, the answer to this question is I started out with a bit of savings that I wanted to invest in something and I'm going to continue to subsidize the cost of the farm through my full time job until it begins to generate an income of its own, at which point it is my goal to snowball any income from the farm into operation for succeeding years. So. This is a question that you're gonna to have to answer for yourself. But really, here's the thing. If you have solidly answered the previous six questions, if you can give a solid why as to why you wanna farm, 
what resources you are starting with, what product you have responsibly paired with those resources, what it's going to cost you to convert that. I do not believe you are going to have any issues getting investors excited about your project if you have in a very educated manner mapped out your farm business plan. I don't think you're going to have any trouble getting people enthusiastic about investing in a small scale operation for creating a sustainable food system. So that is all for this video. I hope it helps you guys out seeing how I formulated a $100,000 farm business plan for my small farm. When I started out, I knew I didn't want this to be a hobby. I wanted to start out with a real and significant plan to profit. And these are the steps I took to figure out exactly what that would take. So hope it helps you. If you want more on pasture based farming for profit and following our journey from the very beginning, go to harmonyfarms.blog, subscribe there, tons of articles and insights that I really hope will help you in your journey towards regenerative farming for profit. Thank you.